everyone. It's Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. And today I've been invited to be a guest blogger over at the Simon Says Stamp blog. And I'll link that below the screen both at YouTube and on Stamp TV. Now today we've just released a brand new batch of stamps at GinaKayDesigns.com and Simon Says Stamp has these stamps now available in their store. So today I want to show you a beautiful new stamp set by one of our newest illustrators, Lisa Hetrick. If you haven't seen Lisa Hetrick's work before, she's an amazing watercolor artist and we are fortunate enough to have been able to transform some of her watercolor paintings into a stamp set. So let me show you the tools and products that you're going to need to make today's project and to do today's techniques. First, you're going to need the stamp set, and this stamp set is the brand new UR stamp set by Lisa Hetrick for Gina K Designs. You're also going to need some ink, and the ink pads that I'm using are a Versamark watermark stamp pad. I'm also using some of the Gina K Designs fresh asparagus ink and some of our bubblegum ink. Then, for embossing powder, I'm using the Gina K Designs Fine Detail Gold Powder. I also have an embossing magic pad. I have some zig markers, and I want to tell you the colors here. The first one is called Purple. Then we have Dark Pink. I have Mid Green, and this one is Green Shadow. I also have some cardstock. I have the Gina K Designs Layering Weight cardstock. This is the white cardstock. And I also have some of the bubblegum pink. I also have a bubblegum pink envelope. And you can find the bubblegum pink and the envelope, the bubblegum pink envelope, in the Winter Rainbow Collection exclusively at Simon Says Stamp. Then I have an EK Success half inch corner rounder. I have a thermal web tape runner. And then I have some 1 8 of an inch score tape. I have a Gina K Designs little mini 1 inch round block. And then I have uh, a mini Misty. And I also have the bar magnet for the mini Misty. And for those of you who haven't tried the mouse pad, I also am using that today. And that is such a convenient tool because it replaces the pad that comes in the Mini Misty, but it's got this grid that is completely cleanable. So if you get ink on it, you just wipe it away. And so you never have to replace that. And then I'm also going to be using a score buddy and I'm going to be using the Tim Holtz tonic cutter. All right, so to begin, I'm going to be making a wreath card today, and I'm going to start with this large wreath stamp. So let me grab that off of the sheet here, and I'm going to be using a piece of cardstock that I have cut down three and three quarters of an inch by three and three quarters of an inch. So this is a little square card. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be using that bar magnet today or not. We'll have to see if there's any room for it. But as long as this piece of cardstock is tucked into the corner here, I'll be able to restamp if necessary. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And that's where I'm going to place my wreath. And I'm going to pick up that stamp using the lid of the Mini Misty. All right, so now I'm going to grab some of that fresh asparagus ink and I'm going to ink up this wreath very well with this ink. Now you can also do this by embossing the wreath first, or you can use black ink if you prefer. But I wanted to use a green ink, and I'm also going to color the wreath in with other greens. This way it's all looking like real vines. Okay, so I'm going to just make sure I get a good impression there. And there is my wreath. So that is ready to go. And then I'm going to replace that bar magnet up in that corner. Now my next stamp that I'm going to use is going to be this little flower. And you can see it's well loved. I've used it so much that I've stained it pink. I'm going to place that into this empty spot down here in the corner. And I'm going to lay it so that it's not really overlapping with any of the greenery. And this is designed to fit right in there perfectly. 
So I'm going to pick that up with the lid of the Misty and make sure my cardstock is back in place. Now, Lisa is a watercolor artist, and I've seen her designs similar to this done in watercolor, and they're just beautiful. So I want to try to achieve the same look. So I'm going to start with some of the bubblegum ink, and I'm going to stamp that first into that spot. So I just want to lay down a little bit of color there so you can see how that looks. So now my next step is to grab these two zig markers and I'm going to start with the lighter one. This one is the dark pink. Let me close up this ink pad for a minute. And I'm going to just kind of color right onto this pretty little flower, a little bit of that dark pink. Just look kind of like brush strokes. And then I'm going to stamp over that flower again using the dark pink. So now I've added a little bit of stroke in there that kind of makes it look a little more like watercolor because the color's blending a little bit. Now I'm going to go back with the purple marker and I'm going to add a couple little strokes in there of that purple. Not a lot, just a little bit. And I'm going to stamp it again. And that gives me my extra color. And if you can see that up close, or you can take a look at the picture on the blog, you'll be able to see those three different colors blending together to give the appearance of watercolor. So now my next step is going to be to add some of the little berries that come in this wreath set. And you can see this little design right here. I'm just going to put that right onto the acrylic block because this one, I don't have to be quite as precise. And I'm going to fill in these areas with some of these little berries using the bubblegum pink. And I've chosen the bubblegum pink because I want it to coordinate with the card base and also with the envelope. So I added those there and I'm adding some down there. Now you can always go back and add a little bit of extra color if you want. If you'd rather have a little bit of that darker pink in there, you can just add a little bit of it to those berries. I'll just do that just to add a little, just a little on the side. Okay, so now I'm going to color the rest of the wreath and I'm going to start with the green shadow. I'm just going to fill in these leaves with the green shadow. Now I'm not a watercolor expert, but the nice thing about this stamp set is you don't have to be because Lisa's done the work. All of these lines on this stamp are very brush strokey looking, like you can almost see the way this would have looked if she had done it as a watercolor piece and we hadn't transformed it into a stamp set. You can imagine all of the beautiful watercolor filling in these leaves. And that's why I've chosen the zigs because they're just kind of fun and they're very clear, transparent. And then I'm going to add a second green to that. This is the mid green and I'm just going to add a little bit like along maybe just the bottoms of each of the leaves. Kind of going down the side a little just to change up the color and Kind of give it more of that watercolor look where there's more than one color going on. Now, of course, you could stamp this on watercolor paper and then you can wet the paper and you'd be able to get more of a watercolory blend in there. But this is just regular cardstock, so it's going to dry very quickly and it's very smooth. So you can see what I've done there. Okay, so now it's time to add a greeting. So the greeting, I love the greetings in this set. It's got this huge U and then you can match it with you are a joy, you are amazing, you are loved. So for this one, I'm going to do you are loved. So I'm going to start by adding some of that embossing magic pad all over the surface of this. The embossing magic pad removes static from the surface of the card and it also kind of absorbs any oils that you might have on the cardstock from your skin and it allows the embossing powder to stay only where you want it. 
And because I'm embossing this, I'm going to be able to overlap the greeting onto the leaves without worrying that they're not going to be seen. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put that up just a little bit higher, like that. And I'm gonna pick that word up with the lid of the Misty. Now I have a little piece of cardstock here. I'm gonna use this just for my embossing powder. So I'm gonna do half the greeting first, and then I'm gonna do the other half after. I'm gonna actually emboss this one completely first. So I'm using the Versamark ink, and I'm adding that greeting onto the wreath. Make sure I get good coverage. And now I'm going to grab this piece of cardstock and the fine detail gold embossing powder and I'm going to emboss this using the gold. So you can see it's just where I want it. I don't have any extra embossing powder anywhere. I'm going to put this back so I don't burn it up when I start heating this. And then I'm using a Marvi heat tool. You can use any heat tool that you have. I know Simon Says Stamp has great options. And I'm going to heat that up quickly. And see how pretty that looks in the gold. Okay, so now this is going to slip back into my mini Misty, and I'm going to find my next stamp that I want. And like I said, for this one, I'm going to use You Are Loved. I love Lisa's handwriting. These are all written in her own handwriting, and they're just beautiful. So we're going to put that one there and pick it up with the lid of the Misty. And again, ink that up with Versamark. Get it nice and inky. I've used this stamp set quite a few times now, so it's well conditioned. But sometimes when you're using it for the first time, you just need to give it a little extra ink just to make sure you have good coverage. And that is certainly one of the benefits of using the Misty or the Mini Misty because you can always go back and re-ink. All right, so now I'm going to add this gold embossing powder again. Right there. And let me get rid of this excess. We're not done embossing just yet, though. I'm going to show you a fun tip coming up here. And now it's time to emboss this. If you have any embossing powder anywhere that you don't want it, you can always use a fine brush or you can just brush it away using your finger. Okay. You can see how pretty that is. You are loved. So now what I want to do next is I want to mount this onto a piece of gold cardstock. But maybe you don't have gold cardstock, or maybe the gold cardstock that you have doesn't match perfectly with the embossing powder. So I want to show you a quick tip on how to make that happen. So what you can do is you can take your Versamark pad and you can just rub some Versamark just along the edge of a piece of cardstock that's cut just a little bit bigger than the piece you're going to layer on top. So in this case, my piece of cardstock is cut 3 and 7 8 inches by 3 and 7 8 inches. Okay, and then I'm going to grab that scrap piece of paper again and grab my embossing powder. And I'm going to put embossing powder all around the perimeter of this card. And this is going to give me the perfect matching gold edge for my card. It's going to match all that pretty embossing. All right, now let me grab my heat tool. Let me get rid of the little excess there. Okay. And then this is going to come up quickly because my heat tool is nice and hot. This is a great way to 
have different colors of cardstock that maybe you don't have in your collection, but you need something to match, you can just create your own edges. Okay. So there we go. That is the perfect match. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of stamp cleaner. You can use some ultra clean or any kind of stamp cleaner you have. And I'm going to clean off my surface here, my craft mat, because that Versamark is a little bit sticky. Okay. So now I'm going to mount this piece onto my gold piece using some tape runner. And because I have a lot of embossing on here, I'm going to use an extra little bit of tape. Some of you like to use liquid glue, and that's fine too. And this is going to go right on top. You can see how nice that looks now. The edges all match perfectly. And then that is going to go onto a card base. And this card base measures four and a quarter inches by eight and a half inches. And then I scored it at four and a quarter and folded it in half for a little square card. And there is my finished card project. Now one of the biggest stumbling blocks for square cards that a lot of card makers have is finding the right envelope for them. Now a, a square card, if you're going to mail it, you're probably better off just adding a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch cardstock just to keep the envelope rigid and then slipping this four and a quarter inch card right inside because then you won't pay any additional postage. But if you would like to have the perfect size envelope to match your card, maybe you're hand delivering this or you're attaching it to a gift or you're using it as a gift card holder, you can make your own using that same A2 size envelope. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab a paper cutter and I'm going to open up this envelope and I'm going to cut it down to five and a quarter inches. Okay, so this is a regular A2 envelope, but I'm going to cut it down to five and a quarter inches on one side, like that. And then I'm going to flip it around, and I am going to cut it down to four and three quarter inches on the other side. Now, I like it to line up nicely. I like these two, these little flaps here to look the same. So you can adjust it a little bit just to make sure that these two little flaps are about the same size. Just talking about these two little things. But it should work out if you do the five and a quarter measurement and then the four and three quarter measurement. So let me just take that little extra off. Okay, so now you have this great little envelope that just needs to be assembled. And I'm going to do that using some 1 8 of an inch score tape. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to open this up flat and then I'm going to just grab a little bit of score tape and tear it off and I'm going to go all the way down to the line right along the edge, very, very close to the edge, like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, right down to the bottom and then right along that edge because you really need the entire rest of the envelope for the card to fit in so you really want to keep it close to the edge there okay now i'm going to check it on the other side and make sure the tape's not sticking out and it is not so i'm going to grab my scissors and i'm just going to cut off that excess okay now score tape likes to get pressed down really hard. So I'm going to grab this from my score buddy, this little tool here, and I'm just going to press it down to really press the tape into the envelope. And then I'm going to peel away the liners. And I'm going to fold that back into place. OK. So now that envelope is nice and sealed. But I want the corners to look pretty because I think that looks kind of handmade, like I didn't really do a good job there. 
of making it look like an envelope but if you take the little corner rounder tool by EK Success this comes in a little two pack you get one that's a little bit smaller and then you get a wider curve and you can use either one I'm using the one that's a little bit smaller here and I'm just going to round that corner and do the same thing on this side now my corners of my envelope are round and it looks a lot more elegant and you can see that this card will fit in there perfectly and it'll stay nice and sealed on the sides and then you can just fold it down and you've got your gum your glue all ready to go so you can make a bunch of these little square envelopes for whenever you need them in the different colors to match your cardstock so this is one of my finished card projects and I want to show you another one that I did in a different color combination. This is the turquoise C, so I made a turquoise C envelope. And then in this card I used You Are a Joy instead of You Are Loved. Just to show you two different cards with that same layout. And those are my finished card projects. I hope you enjoyed today's Stamp TV video and head over to the Simon Says Stamp blog to read more about these card projects and visit simonsaysstamp.com to get this and other new release stamp sets by Gina K Designs. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.